Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Today I am going to be discussing referencing approved drug products in ANDA submissions. Um, we're going to discuss what is a reference listed drug as well as what is a reference standard and how you would go about identifying those in your abbreviated new drug application. This is important because it's very fundamental to ANDA development and submission. So before I jump in to um, the topic, I thought I would start with some general principles. This will help show why selection of the correct reference listed drug and reference standard is important. So approval of a generic drug starts with a listed drug. And generally, this is an innovator drug that has been approved under Section 505C of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And the ANDA relies on FDA's finding of safety and effectiveness for the reference listed drug. And in order to do so, it requires a demonstration of sameness of a number of characteristics plus additional information to permit reliance on this reference listed drug. So what type of evidence does FDA require to support the approval of an ANDA? Among other things, an applicant must generally show that the proposed generic drug has the same active ingredient, conditions of use, route of administration, dosage form, strength, and with certain permissible differences, labeling as the reference listed drug. The applicant also has to show that their proposed drug is bioequivalent to the reference listed drug. And if in vivo bioequivalent studies are required for approval, the applicant must use the reference standard selected by the FDA. Finally, the proposed generic drug has to meet the same high standards of quality and manufacturing as drug products that are approved under Section 505C. So the focus of today's talk is um, FDA's guidance for industry on referencing approved drug products in ANDA submissions. This guidance was published in January of 2017 as a draft guidance and contains information on how to identify the reference listed drug, the reference standard, as well as the basis of submission for your ANDA. Um, the reason that we published this guidance was because over the years, a variety of factors had led to confusion on what these terms mean, as well as how to use them. Um, for example, one of the, the things that caused some confusion at the time was the format of the Orange Book. So prior to 2017, both the electronic and printed versions of the Orange Book identified the reference listed drug and the reference standard with a plus sign in the printed version as well as a reference listed drug RLD column in the printed version. There was no distinguishment between RLD and reference standard. So the goal for issuing this draft guidance was to clarify the terms listed drug, reference listed drug, reference standard, as well as basis of submission. We also wanted to provide clarity on how to request designation of a reference listed drug and selection of a reference standard. So we'll start with listed drug. A listed drug is a new drug product. It could be approved under Section 505C of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act for safety and effectiveness. This would be under a new drug application or it could be a generic drug approved under Section 505J in an ANDA. A listed drug is also a product that has not been withdrawn from sale for what FDA has determined to be reasons of safety and effectiveness. A drug product is deemed to be a listed drug on the date that the ANDA or NDA is approved, and each strength of the drug is a distinct drug product and therefore a distinct listed drug. And all listed drugs appear in the orange book. Next is a reference listed drug. As a fundamental basic, an ANDA is required to refer to a listed drug. This is the, this is the RLD. 
the reference listed drug. This is the product that your generic drug is seeking to duplicate. FDA identifies listed drugs that are eligible to be reference listed drugs in the orange book. And a reference listed drug can either be in the active or the discontinued section of the orange book. And if the drug product is contained in the discontinued section of the orange book, FDA must determine if this product was withdrawn from sale for reasons of safety or effectiveness. And FDA must make this determination either before approving an ANDA, or if we have approved ANDAs already, we have to make the determination, or if someone comes in and requests that we make the determination. Those are the three situations. And once we have made this determination as to whether a reference listed drug has been withdrawn for safety or effectiveness, we will publish that determination in the Federal Register. And once that happens, we will add a notation to the orange book so that parties are aware that we've made this determination. So in the printed version of the orange book, reference listed drugs are no identified by a plus sign, which you can see in the red box here. So here, for this drug product, it's available in two strengths. And each strength is a distinct listed drug. And each one has been identified as a reference listed drug. So you could come in with a proposed ANDA for either strength of this listed drug. In the electronic version of the orange book, we have a column marked RLD. And if a listed drug is an RLD, it will be flagged in the RLD column as so. So how do you go about choosing a reference listed drug? This is a decision that is left up to the applicant to do. And it's an important decision because this is the product that you are trying to show sameness to. If you have any questions about choosing a reference listed drug, we encourage you to submit a controlled correspondence. Um, if you're not familiar with the controlled correspondence process, FDA has published guidance on how to submit a controlled correspondence. And you may consult that guidance. One note on petitioned ANDAs. Applicants also may submit an ANDA that is not the same as the reference listed drug because of a different route of administration, different dosage form, different strength, or a different active ingredient in a fixed combination drug product. However, in order to do so, you must first obtain permission from the FDA before submitting an ANDA with one of these changes. And this is what's referred to as a suitability petition. The FDA will not approve a suitability petition if, for instance, investigations must be conducted to demonstrate the safety and effectiveness of the proposed drug, because this is out of the scope of the 505J pathway. And if you are interested in petitioned ANDAs, you can see our regulations at 21 CFR 314.93 for more information. So if you are submitting a petitioned ANDA, how do you figure out what your reference listed drug is? If you're submitting an ANDA for the change from the listed drug, the RLD for the petitioned ANDA must be the same as the listed drug that's identified in the approved suitability petition. And even though you're submitting an ANDA for a change, you are still relying on FDA's previous finding of safety and effectiveness for the RLD. So you are still relying on the reference listed drug, even though your proposed generic is different in some way. Next, we're going to discuss what a reference standard is. So as previously mentioned, an ANDA must be bioequivalent to its reference listed drug. And the reference standard is the product that the ANDA applicant must use in conducting any in vivo bioequivalent studies. To facilitate generic drug development, FDA generally selects a single reference standard. One of the reasons we select a single reference standard is to ensure the greatest level of consistency between the generic drug and its reference listed drug. If everyone is testing against the same product, the products will be closest as possible to each other. And as Alicia mentioned in her presentation, ordinarily, the uh, reference standard will be the highest strength of the reference listed drug, although there are a few exceptions. And when the reference listed drug has been discontinued from marketing, 
and is no longer available, the agency will generally select an, a, a drug product approved in an, in an ANDA as the new reference standard. And if there are multiple approved ANDAs, we generally will select the market leader as the new reference standard. So as far as identifying reference standards, uh, they are identified in the Orange Book. And as I mentioned, prior to 2007, uh, reference standards were identified in the paper version of the Orange Book with a plus sign, just like RLDs were. So it was very confusing to determine which was truly a reference listed drug versus a reference standard. So in 2017, we made some upgrades to both the printed and electronic version of the Orange Book. And now, reference standards are identified with an exclamation point. Um, in the electronic version of the Orange Book, we have identified, we have added a new column beside the RLD column. So there's a separate column for the reference standard. So here for this product, um, you can see the product on the bottom with the red box has been identified as the reference standard. And the last topic that we're going to cover today is the basis for ANDA submission. So as you probably know, an ANDA must contain a basis for its submission. And usually, this is the reference listed drug. The exception here is for petitioned ANDAs, and we will get to this shortly. In your ANDA, you would provide the name of the reference listed drug, its dosage form, strength, and application number on form FDA 356H, as well as in the appropriate sections of the ANDA. If the reference standard is not the same as the reference listed drug, then you would not identify the reference standard on your form 356H. You would identify the reference standard in the relevant sections of the ANDA, which include information on bioequivalence. So for example, in your basis of submission statement in section 1.12.11. One exception is for petitioned ANDAs. Your basis of submission for a petition ANDA contains three pieces of information. First, it's the reference listed drug. And as I mentioned before, this must be the same as the listed drug in the approved suitability petition. Second, you must provide reference to the suitability petition's assigned FDA docket number. And third, you must provide a copy of the correspondence from FDA where we approve your suitability petition. These three items combined become your basis of submission for a petitioned ANDA. So lastly, I thought it would be helpful to walk through a couple of examples of how you would identify a reference listed drug as well as a reference standard in an ANDA submission. So our first example here is the most common situation that you will see. Here we have one drug product that is both the reference listed drug and the reference standard. So here the brand product is in the active section of the orange book. It's both the reference listed drug and the reference standard. So in your application, what you would do is you would identify the reference listed drug on form FDA 356H in field 20, as well as in your ANDA in section 1.12.11. And then for the reference standard, which happens to be the same drug product in this case, you would identify your reference standard in sections 1.12.11, 2.7.1, 5.2, as well as 5.3.1. So this is the simplest situation you could have. So our next example is a little more complicated because here our reference listed drug is in the discontinued section of the orange book. And here we have identified an ANDA product as the reference standard. So how would you go about filling out your form FDA 356H? A very common mistake is that an applicant will identify the reference standard as the reference listed drug on the form. However, this is not correct. 
even though the reference listed drug has been discontinued from marketing and you're performing your in vivo bioequivalent studies against the reference standard, the reference listed drug is the product that you are truly comparing your proposed generic drug to for things such as labeling and other characteristics. Also, the reference listed drug is the drug product that contains evidence of the agency's finding of safety and effectiveness for the drug product. So here, your basis of submission is your reference listed drug, and I, you identify that on Form 356H, as well as Section 1.12.11 of your ANDA. And then your reference standard will be a different drug product, and you will identify that in your ANDA submission in the appropriate sections that pertain to bioequivalence information. So hopefully this explanation of the differences between a reference listed drug and a reference standard have been helpful and will assist you with your ANDA submission. I will be happy to take any questions once we are on to the